So after many years of doing things with bikes I probably shouldn't have, I've actually now damaged one. Well, I didn't damage it, we can blame the council. Come closer, I'll show you. Can you see the problem yet? How about now? Can you see it now? Yeah, basically because they've done a load of road works on the island, there's stone chippings everywhere and I think I've just got really unlucky and uh, had one smack up into the headlight which has broken the glass. I only discovered this the other day when I went to, uh, I was w gonna wash this so I could do the review for it, like that was last week. Uh, and then noticed that and was like, oh dear. So I said to Lexmoto, get me out a new lens and I'll, I'll switch over so I can continue and do the review, which I'm planning to do once I've got this done. Um, they've sent a box and it's quite big. Obviously when I say Lexmoto, uh, they are also the distributors for UM in the UK. So it's the same sort of central company, hence it being Chinese Motorcycle Parts that sent me the bits, just in case that confused you. This is a UM, not a Lexmoto. What is in the box? Oh, it's a box in a box. So there we go, nice and new. Uh, we've got one plug, three bullet connectors and two bolts. So I have an option here, I could just take the lens out of this and switch over the lenses which should be relatively easy with these couple of screws but I would still be required because of the position of these screws if you can see they actually face directly into here the only way that you can take these out is by detaching this anyway and if I'm detaching this well then I might as well you know just change the whole thing uh, at least then I know I've not done anything that would affect the ceiling for water ingress um, so that's basically it. I thought I'd do a video while doing this because, well, you know, you like the uh, the mechanical content. Um, Lexmoto can also see me being nice to their bike. Don't worry, I don't charge too much Lexmoto. I'm only like most mechanics, you know, £70 an hour. I also thought I'd do this video because then it would explain to people why the, the UM review has uh, been a bit longer than I said. Because some people asked and I was like, well, I'm leaving it a while. Because obviously the longer I leave it, the uh, better the review I can give you because I've used it longer. Oh, it's turning on the other side, isn't it? Okay, so this is actually a very tricky one. You have two bolts connecting this to the bike behind here, and you might think, well, just take this plate off. This plate goes all the way around, so you can't take this plate off without taking the light off, and you can't take the light off without getting these bolts out, and you can't get to very easily to either side, both sides at the same time because of the shape. So two spanners is the only option. Oh, it just fits out. So there's one out. Two. What is it with fiddly jobs recently? So now it should, in theory... Yep, pull out. Half the bike's electrics are kept inside the light. Which of course makes perfect sense. And there we go. We are all colour coded so we can just yank all these out. It's also a good opportunity to have a look at the wiring because you know, Chinese bikes, people say about electronics and stuff. Bullet connectors are all there. Yeah, they're crimp fittings, but they look okay. They've all been individually heat shrinked. This doesn't look any different from, you know, OEM stuff from one of the big four. White to white, blue to blue, green to green. Cool. So now we just have to reverse that process, starting with shoving all the electrics back inside the light. Okay, a little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Okay, roughly back in place. Okay, we've got the top nut on. The top one is uh, an adjuster for height. The bottom one is a pivot. And it's proving to be a little bit more difficult to get in, but I'm hoping that by anchoring the light with the top one, I can actually put some force on it get it to get into the right position. 
we're through. So let's use this spanner to just wedge the bottom slightly. Could they have made this easier? Yeah, they could have used keyed bolts uh, so you only had to undo them from one side and not worry about getting on the other side. Doing them up's not such a problem because they'll grip and you can keep tightening, but undoing it requires getting to both sides. Okay, there's that. Then the height adjustment, well, it was basically all the way back. Let's have a look at the see where the marks were. Yep, it was all the way back. Okay, well, let's check. Yep, high beam, low beam, high beam, low beam. Working, no problems. Check the indicators. Yeah. So we haven't dislodged any wires in doing that. Well, there we go. That was actually just two bolts, three bullet connectors, and one multi-connector. But it was one hell of a job with my sized hands, the access amount, sort of, because of the way that it is. And also the humidity today. I am dying. It is so goddamn hot. Well, anyway, the UM Renegade Commander review is coming soon because I can now give this bike a clean because we have a nice fresh light on it. Huge thanks to my patrons who are going up the screen. <laughs> uh, leave a like if you found this sort of content interesting. I've got loads of other stuff I've done recently you might like. Check out the channel, subscribe. If you want to support in any other way you can. Oh my god, I'm so hot, I'm just going to go. Bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.